it is handy to have a spare GPU, and these are my PCI Express critters. This is an NVS 300 and a 6350. You can pop them into just about anything and get a working display. That is, if you can find the adapter for this DMS connector. But I wanted something with modern outputs that could do 4K60. It also had to be cheap, low profile, and preferably bus powered. You know what? I thought this A310 was going to be the solution, but it is fantastically loud. And you gotta pull the heatsink off if you want to swap the bracket. You can't make that up. Now I ran across this guy on eBay going for about 30 bucks. But when I asked the internet how well it worked on Linux, I got a shrug emoji. I don't like shrug emojis, so let's do something about that. So here we have the AMD Radeon Pro WX3100. It was released back in 2017 for $199. It's got 4GB of GDDR5 on 128-bit bus, 512 shading units, 8 compute units, and it supports OpenCL, Vulkan, and DX12. But it's Polaris, so no Rockham, and that means no compute for things like Blender and DaVinci Resolve. But we do get a bit of blue tin and three display holes, all in a 65-watt package. Let's plug it into the test bench and see if it knows how to Linux. On Linux, AMD GPUs work out of the box. Kinda. We still need to install the firmware bits if we want a resolution slightly higher than that of a potato. Now it's time to crack open LAC and let's see what's on this menu. We can adjust power, performance levels, fan curves, or give it a forever speed. So let's make it scream. At 20%, it's inaudible. 50% lets you know it's there. 75? Oh, I'm feeling that. And 100%? Yep, that's the business. That looks like 1080p60. What about 4K? Hmm, nice. And no screen tearing to be found. Neat. And no problems with 4K YouTube or the 4K Warbody in MPV. Just to keep things interesting, I'm putting the WX3100 up against the A310 and a 5600G. And up first, it's everyone's favorite furry hole. At 720p, the WX3100 is kind of in a slap bite with the 5600G at 28 and 29 frames per second, while the A310 breaks into the 30s. 1080p is more of the same with the 3100 and 5600G both scoring 16 FPS, while the A310 dominates the charts with a blistering 17 frames per second. Superposition at 720p opens things up a bit with the 5600G outpacing the 3100 by 9% while the A310 is on the other side of the chart with 85.59 frames per second. And we're still seeing 4-ish frames per second difference at 1080p on Team AMD, while once again the A310 pulls ahead with 31.40. Take that, console peasants. Then moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where the 3100 outperforms the 5600G, putting it well within reach of the 54 frames of sadness delivered by the A310. We're going to round out this hardware torture session with Cybertruck 2077. The 3100 technically functions at 27 frames per second, while the 5600G is around 7% slower than the A310 at 34.9 frames per second. I'm going to call this a win. It's like a portable 5600G that doesn't nom 4 gigabytes of your system memory. It's quiet, it's blue, it outputs 4K60, and unlike the Sparkle, you don't have to remove the heatsink to swap the bracket. It's a whole lot of spare video card for 30 bucks, and it's still plug and play on a modern Linux distribution. I'll put a link to it in the video description. And if you want to read the full write-up, head over to interfacinglinux.com, and while you're there, feel free to ask me some questions in the forums. But most importantly, I want you to get out there and make something awesome.